I was jamming with this kid, uh, his name was Michael, and he's the one that actually found the rehearsal space that we had uh, at Bishop Manor. And he hit me up, he's like, yo man, I found this room, which was just, like two blocks away from his house, because he used to live in Deep Ellum. And that was a while ago. And then a bunch of people came and went. Uh, we didn't really have a name or anything, we were just trying to find people to build the lineup. Um, overall, I think about like 27, 26 people came and went. Um, Eventually, we kind of separated, and he was doing his own thing, and I was doing my own thing, but still in the same room. And one day, he brought in a new one, which, uh, and I was gonna help Michael in this project, so he was gonna bring his songs in, and blah, blah, blah. And then we jammed with new one, and then that didn't work out with, with Michael. So we had, I was myself, new one, and two other people and Nguyen had another band. I assumed that this would take full time, so I was like, hey, it's probably not gonna work out if you have another band. So we kind of split ways. But then after some time, I hit him up and was like, hey, can you come back? <laughs> we need a drummer. And I think at that point, he had like one show left with his other band, and 
they played and then he was free full time so we started kind of playing started playing and from um, then on we had another musician come by yeah we're like two or three two or three and then we gave, actually made yeah, gabe yeah we made gabe yeah i had uh i just responded to to an ad in craigslist and from there i mean pretty much just met up and jammed and then i just started coming to practice regularly yeah here i am now we went through three bases right after that when gabe joined oh like went three 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 bass four. players there's a lot of people and some of them were kind of weird in good ways so we played at the, the door it was the sound guy's first gig there and he just trashed our sound and it was garbage and we were really upset like we trashed our gear i think gabe was like kind of fuck this town and he went, went to, go to see show. where'd you go caves yeah caves arlington yeah i went over to uh to caves and uh, there was actually another band that was playing that some of my friends had gone out to see and so went out there and that's where i met paul so uh, we just talked about the bands you know i told him that we were looking for a bass player at the time we just had like a guy just filling in kind of like a temp it was it was funny the first practice i was like oh hell yeah i'm in i like i love this and nico was like no dude i want you to go home and think about it i'm like okay but uh i'm I thinking mean, about it right now <laughs> <laughs> i'm i'm pretty sure that uh well, the reason I said mind. that was because a lot of people were like, yeah, totally, I dig it, I'm in. And then like a week later, I was like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I thought about it, and I don't have time. Like, yeah, I was pretty adamant about that.
So we self-labeled ourselves post-indie. Definitely not garage rock, though. Definitely not garage rock. I think I think in the beginning we aspired to be garage rock, but then I personally got tired of it. Not necessarily like aspired to, it, but not, wanted but the we, energy. We, hey, we like the yeah. energy. We like what garage rock. The energy of a garage rock for sure is it's very you know intense and kind of draws in energy. Ultimately, the the post indie thing I think is really just kind of just kind of poking fun at ourselves and just the way that music snobs are in general. So. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it initially it started as a joke, um, but like I think Gabe's friend was the one that mentioned like, well, if you're post indie and indie bands are usually like unsigned, like independent. Yeah, so like what that is, means what you're, is a mean band, that you're a signed right? band. So it's like it's like life after indie. Right, right. But it's, it's poking <laughs> fun at it in the way that not in a like a commercial sense, like oh, we're we're signed, like we're post indie. But more like when indie became an actual genre, which it was never actually supposed to be. Uh, we kind of came after that. Um, the way I see, which is totally subjective, and not to sound pretentious, but I do think our strongest point is the fact that our music is so versatile. You're listening from one song to the next, and it's not the not same the at all. Like it does not sound the same, but you can still feel that it's sort of the same band. Yeah, post indie for me is like not not sticking to that one formula every band does. Okay, first recording, Black Rainbow. I think it's four songs. This is just me like home recording everything. Out of those that we learned and play live, we only released like four, I think. Uh, the only one that was actually written sort of in a collaboration was uh, Spaceships with Nguyen. But uh, those, and then, then we released uh, 2017, in December of 2017, I think. Well, as of now, we're in the process of recording some. Yeah, like actual professionally actual recording. Because the second EP it was the same deal, like just done by, by myself. But now we're actually recording everything together, and that's taking time. Uh, one of the songs, two of the songs that we played today, are actually ones we're recording.
out, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out, I'll figure it out.